This audio program is presented to you by the International Order of Ninjas, AskAninja.com, and Audikill. Audikill, audio that can find you wherever you are and kill you. The Ninja Handbook. Disclaimer. Okay, the writers and publishers of the Ninja Handbook are dead serious about the fact that this audiobook will kill you. Just stop listening and walk away. Chapter 3. Nanja. Those who complain often end up as stains. The hands they are a choking. Bob Killen. You're starting out on the path to earn your nanja status, a rank that proves that you are someone who watches Steven Seagal movies with an eye of judgment, a rank that shows you know the difference between hiya and hiya, a rank that says, I recognize that ninjas are the pinnacle of awesome, and I will strive to my death to become even a vague shadow of a cousin of such eliteness. Contrary to popular stupidity, a real nanja is not just a non-ninja. A nanja is a non-ninja who tries to be a ninja. There's a huge difference. Just plain old non-ninjas don't need a special name. They're not special. Every year, millions of people don't try out for American Idol. What are they called? Nothing. They're not important or relevant to the show, except for their valuable votes. Therefore, the first rung of the ladder of severe peril is proving that you have something that sets you apart from people that have nothing that sets them apart. The truth is, you got a long road ahead of you. A road full of sharp, bladed, poisonous, bitey, teary, out of nowhere, weird but like bad weird, furious, upside down, hard, reverse, multiplied, jumpy, underwater, ancient, pineapple-y things. Things is really as specific as we can be at this point. Now, a lot of the ideas that you encounter as you work towards your ninja status, they're going to seem formidable or immense. They're not. This is the basic stuff. Any ninja can perform any task in this chapter while cooking a perfect souffle omelet and fighting and debating a panther. I did not misspeak there. I meant to say panther. It's a half panther, half panda bear with the philosophies and intelligence of Harold Pinter. It's always night, or we wouldn't need light. Thelonious Monk. Dead guy. As you battle for awesomeness in this chapter, you must also accomplish the requirements below, or so help us, you will not finish this chapter. And by finish, we mean survive. After accomplishing each challenge, you must make a scroll describing your triumph, and then burn the scroll, and then eat the ashes. It's okay to mix with some applesauce if you need to. Nanja Requirements 1. Basic ability to separate your spiritual essence from your physical form without losing any power, hair, or animal magnetism from either. 2. Identifying anything by its primary sensory mechanism, organic or inorganic. 3. General weapon proficiency, like at least 400 weapons. 4. Drive your fist, foot, or head through 10 steel or stone walls. 5. Present yourself to your master in full mission ninja dress. Show the weapons you will use and how you plan to use them. 6. Explain the rules for safe killing in urban, suburban, and rural areas. 7. Record your best results in the following physical fitness test. Ninja style push-ups. Consecutive 780 spin kicks. Wall climb. Marathon sprint. Standing vertical leap. Both with goddess help and without goddess help. 8. Participate in a no-holds-barred to the death electric cage match. 9. Explain why we use the buddy system in ninjaing. 10. Demonstrate how to display, raise, lower, and fold the dead. The Ninja Code. Even a ninja must understand and live by the ninja code, or die a terrible, painful, agonizing, lengthy, ghastly death at the hands of those you have betrayed! Ninja Oath On the throats of everyone I know, I will pursue awesomeness, perfect that which can't be perfected, kill that which needs to be killed, and fearlessly face the known and unknown with the fire and passion of a fire and passion ant. Ninja Law A ninja is... Loyal, deadly, sneaky, death-dealing, flexible, deathly, clever, dangerous, focused, lethal, amazing, violent, hidden, slayish, and cheerful. Ninja motto. B. Ninja slogan. Do. Code of death. As a ninja, I will do my best to kill clean, kill fast, Kill considerately, kill only that which has been approved for death through all proper channels, is verified with signed scrolls from at least three ninja masters, and has been adequately analyzed using both the shadow method, including the pink PX479W form, and the wind method, the deathmas test, and McKillie's process. Code of Stealth The very code of stealth itself was hidden thousands of years ago by an unknown ninja master, but if the code can stay hidden without detection for that long, so should you. Now these codes and pledges are just words, and real ninja speaks with action. Seek out others who are on the path and extremely share your experiences and opportunities with them. 
If they betray you, you will get to have one of those emotionally charged revenge missions. If they don't, you will have a friend. For now. You know what you need to do? You need to get off your butt and go kill something. Death is a beautiful thing. You're never going to realize this until you find yourself a demonic blunder boar or some other alternate reality beast and trick him into cutting off one of his own arms and beating himself to death with it. Document it. Date, time, what did you kill, why did I kill it, how did I kill it, what did I do afterward to celebrate, what did I like about the kill, what did I not like, what am I going to do differently next time? Of course you're going to make sure that you fill out all the appropriate and necessary kill approval forms and waivers with the Ion Division of Life before you do anything. Location, location, location. Where am I? Although as a ninja you will rarely want others to know where you are, it is always beneficial for you to know where you are. To start ninjaing, you need to know where you are starting from. So grab a piece of paper and answer the following questions. Where are you in relationship to your home? Where are you in relationship to your hood? Where are you in relationship to your land? Where are you in your relationship to Earth? And where are you in relationship to the universe? And then also list all perceived threats in any of those areas. You're going to want to make an extra copy because it's always fun to revisit this exercise every couple of years to realize the where where you thought you were then is not the where where you actually are now, which is the then of your current now. Right? Now, to start behaving like a ninja, you will need to figure out what location means. The where of a threat will affect the process for you dealing with it. You need to assess all aspects and dimensions of a threat. Proximity to you, what potential evil is driving it. If you kill a zombie in Seattle that's controlled by a twizzard in Portland, Oregon... Have you really solved your problem? I don't think so. Let's say that you're a 13-year-old ninja living in Gross Point, Michigan, and the biggest threat in your hood right now is a kid named Wyatt Mutchler. He's two years older than you, and he has a BB gun and a dog that may or may not be possessed by a demon spirit. Here's what you're going to want to do. One. Sneak into the lair of that red-headed teen and study every aspect of how he lives. Two. Investigate any alliances he may have formed with humans, like Melissa Bowler, or Beast, that hellhound disguised as a Pomeranian. Or like a half-human, half-beast, which would be that guy in second period who has a mustache. Or the undefinable yet definitely evil allies, like his skateboard. Three. Conceive the possible effects that he and his tools of terror could have on the beauty of life and your pursuit of that beauty. Four. Now draw a detailed picture outlining these dangers. Five. And repeat steps one through four for each perceived threat in your life. Exercises for Beginners. Now, whether you're a 12th-level black belt in multiple disciplines of martial arts or her husband, you have got to prepare yourself for ninja-ing. Being a ninja is not a set of skills. It's a complete realignment of your perception of reality and a really kick-butt set of skills. I'm going to give you a couple exercises that have proven to be a great place for beginners of all levels to start. If you happen to die while doing any of them, this book is probably not for you. You should just find yourself a nice little piece of dirt and lie there. Replace all variations of hello in your vocabulary with head punches. Get raving compliments about your great ideas and input for at least 30 meetings or classes that you did not attend. Being a ninja is not about being there. It's about having the impact of your presence felt, whether you're there or not. Pick a fight with an inanimate object at least four times your body mass. It's tough to tell when you've finally beaten an inanimate object. Since inanimation is one of the main clues to know you've beaten an animated object, this is where the real ninja part comes in. Lock someone that you know very well into a container. Now dress up exactly like them and live their life for one full week. Keep in mind, you are not doing an impression of this person for Saturday Night Live. You are physically replacing them in the world. Your mimicry, and your mustache if applicable, must be perfect. Choose five mechanical objects that you usually operate with your hands and operate them with your feet. At least one of the objects should have a serrated spinning blade. Take a reliable compass and walk outside. Now run in a perfectly straight line for eight hours. Do not pause for traffic or obstacles. Do not go around anything. If you meet a building, you gotta go over it or under it. If people are in your way, you gotta make them not in your way. When the eight hours are up, walk home. But use a different route and journal about all the wonders that you see. Release 10 small poisonous things in your house. Give them a thousand count head start. Now, time yourself on how long it takes you to wrangle them up. This is a fun one to do with a friend who can get the best time. Make a small pocket somewhere on your epidermis using only your own skin. The pocket should be sturdy, waterproof, and able to hold a wallet or salt shaker without detection. Choose one widely accepted law of physics and blatantly contradict it.
Sneak into a multiplex movie theater, at least 16 screens, and spend the entire day there undetected. You have to watch each movie available and steal at least $40 in concessions for each movie you watch. That's a lot of popcorn. It's a lot of juju fruits. It's a lot of junior mints. Match or die. One of the most important skills the ninja must learn is how to choose the right weapon for a kill. Hey, I think I'm gonna use a bow and arrow to kill this Midgard serpent. As ridiculous and obviously wrong an example as that is, you'd be surprised how many ninjas in training don't know how to choose the appropriate weapon for the beast they are fighting. Of course, at times, you will not have a choice over weapon and a ninja should be prepared to fight with any object at his or her disposal. But, more often than not, you're gonna know what you're heading to fight and you can prepare accordingly. Choosing the right weapon for the foe you're fighting is like choosing the right theme park for a vacation. If you decide incorrectly, you will die a gruesome and painful death at the hands of genetically replicated dinosaurs. Let's build something. A shuriken. You know, killing something with your bare hands is a noble and satisfying task, but it's not always a practical one. As you slink down the path of ninja, you will begin to notice the benefit of literally thousands of weapons, or killer helpers, that come in dozens of shapes and sizes and sharpness. But remember, the most reliable weapon you will ever hold is one made by you. Learning how to make your own weapons is a very important part of ninja-ing. This book's gonna show you how to make several handy tools of death, but you should learn how to make, like, a lot more on your own. I'm gonna start off with a classic ninja staple that belongs hidden in several locations on every ninja at all times. The shuriken. Of course you've most certainly have heard of a shuriken, but only through building one can you learn just how special an instrument of pain and death it can be. Aside from a healthy dose of fortitude, you're gonna need a couple items to get started. Supplies. A phoenix, four pounds of steel, two minotaur hooves, a kayak, a length of rope, and about a medium-sized mermaid skull mixing bowl. Step one. Molten ice steel in the flames of the phoenix and place in the mermaid skull mixing bowl. Watch out for stray feathers and ash, though, because you really want pure steel. Step two. Using your bare hands in the incantation of callus, now available at Josiah's Index of Incantations and Good Eaten in paperback, shape the liquid steel into one large six-pointed star with a two-foot diameter. Just so you know, you can make a star with any number of points, ranging up to infinity or down to negative seven. However, we are using six for this recipe since it's the most common star used by ninjas today. Step three. Using the minotaur hooves, press and push down the star to a 5 inch diameter. This is called making a super saturated solid. The magic in the hooves will do most of the work for you during this step, but you will need to keep your wits about you, cause if physics or logic find out that you're defying several of their basic tenets by consolidating a mass beyond their capacity of its molecules, an atom might crack, open and obliterate you and everything in a 35 mile radius from the face of the earth. Step 4 you now have a pressurized magma hot six pointed thing. It's starting to look like a shuriken, but it ain't one yet. Rinse out the mixing bowl really well and place it in a safe place. Now, pack a hearty snack and your length of rope in your kayak. Paddle down the river of larva in the unexplored Amazon and into the cave of pokes. You will not be in the cave very long before you're attacked by dozens of pokes. Hopefully they will be slow enough that you can strangle one to death before he and his pals pull off your hands and use your arms like a straw. But do not puncture your poke. Once they start bleeding, the blood flow cannot be stopped and you're going to need every ounce he's got. Tie the dead poke to the hood of your kayak and drive that sucker home. Step five. Drain the poke blood into the mixing bowl. Using a pair of mermaid bone tongs, slowly dip the super saturated star in the blood. Take pains not to get any of the blood on you. Even one drop can bring about a lethargy that can knock you on your ass and leave you watching Saved by the Bell reruns for weeks. As the blood soaks into the compressed metal, the device will turn a dark shade of black. Once the entire object is black, rinse the shuriken with a garden hose. You should also probably dispose of the poke body by bringing it to the ancient poke burial grounds in Antarctica. Step 6. Sharpen. Personally, I like to use the circular sawtooth salamanders. Step 7. Throw at something you want to kill. Opinjas. Pirates. They're dirty, poorly educated, disabled dolts who don't know booty from booty. Sir Chivalry, age 72. I would do Johnny Depp in a chili fest outhouse. Calissa, age 15. Great for trying out a new weapon. Nothing dies as fun as a pirate. Gull McDartney, age unknown. They're what you get when you breed a cockroach and a Catholic. Tomb Eyes, age 212. There really needs to be a set limit or a season so that there are enough for everyone to kill. Upper hand, age 42. Sometimes I pretend like they might defeat me, just to listen to the funny way they talk for a while.
It's a hoot. Green Knight, age 21. What do you think? Write your answers down here in the space provided. Oh, wait, this is the, uh, oh. See, if you'd bought the actual book, there's like a little bit of space there for you to write stuff in, but I guess if you're just listening to it, you have to just think about it or write it on something else. The Goldilocks Complex. Now, if you signed up to be a ninja because you wanted fame, you should quit now and start designing video games. Much of what makes a ninja powerful is his or her ability not to be known. It's with this in mind that you must be warned about a syndrome that affects a lot of folks along the ninja path. The Goldilocks Complex. Ironically, the Goldilocks Complex is not very complex at all. It's quite simply the latent and involuntary desire to leave behind even the smallest bit of evidence to prove that you have been someplace. Here are a couple of preventative steps that will help eliminate the risk of contracting this de-ninjifying affliction. 1. CSI Watch any Jerry Bruckheimer crime scene investigation show. One episode will do since they're all exactly the same. Now, ask yourself honestly and with the intensity of David Caruso, would the keen and smoldering veteran with personal demons have caught you? What about the entirely too sexy lab assistant? Perhaps the spicy Latina detective and the suspiciously in-shape computer expert working as a team. You have to be able to fool them all if you want to be a ninja. 2. Catmander in Chief Paint an LOL cat on the forehead of the President of the United States using invisible ink. Your challenge is to leave without taking any of the super cool president stuff that's lying around. You can't take the ball of Zimbora flax that was given as a peace offering from the Melanie Griefiths. Not the Air Force One peanut M&Ms. Not the briefcase labeled, the end. We are ninjas, not burglars. We must resist the impulse to collect. It clutters your life and can become rather creepy if gone unchecked. 3. Fat Crib Live for one month inside the blubber folds of a morbidly obese shut-in without their knowledge. You are not allowed to leave their body for any reason during the entire month, even if they die. You will be able to subsist on the sweat, crumbs, and insects living within the folds. 4. Gates Keeper Without his knowledge, replace Bill Gates' entire home and business computing setup with Apple products. If done correctly, it should be a full 30 days before he gets his first iPhone bill and realizes you pulled the old switcheroonie on him. 5. The Bark Test This is a big one, okay? Because they're a genetic combination of bears and sharks, barks do have arguably one of the best senses of smell among aquatic furred mammals. Your challenge is to remove a baby bark from his mother's marsupial pouch without her becoming aware of you. As an additional challenge, slice yourself open, wrist to elbow, on both arms before entering the ocean. Weapon highlight. Sword. You ever need to cut a throat? Open the back of a robotic tiger? Maybe whittle a wooden stake or slice off a limb or punch a hole in a basilisk? You want to metaphorically screw a pack of wolverines? Make pig shavings to attract those wolverines or trim the mouths of those wolverines as they're trying to bite you? Well, a good sword can help you with all those tasks and millions more. A good sword for general use has a comfortable handle, a sturdy hilt, and a really, really, really sharp blade that sticks outward. Then there's a photo here in the book that tells you how to take the sword out of the sheath without cutting yourself in half, but since you can't see that, um, don't cut yourself in half when you pull your sword out. Good luck. Do. Keep the sword hidden except when you're using it. And even then, you probably want to mask it as much as possible. Do. Cut things that are not your body parts. Do. Stab people who try and take your sword. Do. Keep that sword sharp and clean. Just try facing down a bipolar bear with a dirty, dull blade. Do. Obey any transmeditory laws of weaponry. Swords are not welcome in all planes of consciousness, e.g. origamium or bubble world. Do not. Carry your sword whimsically or in stage musicals. Do not. Throw your sword. You have plenty of other sharp, deadly things to whip at people. Do not. Stab, slice, or thrust toward yourself unless you are absolutely certain that you can stop the sword before it stabs, slices, or thrusts you. Demonized limbs are an exception. You just gotta get those things off. Do not. Be hesitant about using your sword in conjunction with other weapons. If it's a proper ninja sword, you should be able to attach chains and bull whips, and, you know, for building up speed and reaching around corners. You can bat shirkins with it. You can flip other... Just basically anything your crazy, freaky mind can come up with. Do it. I recall when I first started training in the sword, I was concerned because my master didn't have a head. I thought his lack of eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and brain would limit his ability to teach. Boy, was I wrong. 
By the time I left him, I was seriously considering removing my own head in pursuit of his genius. If I didn't love Lemon Sorbet so much, I'm confident I would have. Shank, you very much. Ninja, Swordmaster. Suggested sword reading. The following compendiums not only contain many wonderfully fine points about sword use, but are also each written on one-of-a-kind swords. Now you see it, now you're dead. Written by Lady Dai on the Blade of Gori. Of Slice and Zen. Written by the Lord of Swords on Swingy Todd. Through the Cutting Glass. Written by Mark Payne on the Chevy Impaler. Certified Ninja Products for Beginners. Whether you're training at home or heading out on your first assassination, these items will help you to live to tell about it. These and other deadly fine certified ninja products can be found hidden in authorized shops in most major malls. Or you can look for our ads in Bruise Week and Entertainment Sneakly. Blackie's Bag of Pointy Things. Great for teaching you to fight in the moment. This potpourri bag of sharp objects is full of surprises. Each bag contains 24 random pointy things that can range from an extremely sharpened pencil to a buck tooth cobra or the corner of a table. Knife Monkey. One rabid Reese's monkey wearing a lightweight suit of razor sharp switchblades. Let this insane and armed primate loose in your home and get ready for hours of life threatening fun. Sand. An 8 ounce bag of grade A multi use sand. Comes with three 10,000 page manuals sand skills for beginners, beach of death, and grains of annihilation. Weapon Trick Kit. Sure, you have a bow staff, but can it twist apart in the middle and break into two halves connected by a chain? It could if it was tricked out with Whammy's Weapon Trick Kit. This 98-piece set of chains, fasteners, and ball bearings has everything you need to transform your boring sword into a boring sword. Your nunchucks into an old knotty cane, your poisonous darts into fashionable earrings. Flamco's Throwing Fire. A staple for any ninja. Each case contains 20 fire bursts, 10 orange, 10 white. Flameco's patented fire technology ensures a reliable and powerful disbursement of premium hot flames with each toss. They also have blue, black, and clear fire, and usually have an ad in Boy's Death magazine. Grandma Knickerbottom's Eviscerators Anyone who has tried to pull out the innards of a fork-tongue spitting walrus knows that eviscerating can be a super messy job, cumbersome and awkward. Let everyone's favorite grandma give you a hand, or rather, a hook. The Knickerbottom family has spent centuries developing and honing the perfect tools for slicing open bellies and getting all that stuff inside out. So sharp and sturdy that even a grandma can use it. Each eviscerator comes with four scrumptious recipes for turning those nasty vitals into yummy vittles. The Bleeding Edge Before attempting to take the next step on the path, you need to take a couple seconds to assess and confirm your worthiness. Meet with a ninja master and discuss your progress. Spar with him in an open, dusty field with a lot of high winds going on. Attack him with all forms and weapons that you know. Clanversations. Discuss the following questions with your clanmates. What is life? What is not life? What is something each clan member can do to be seen less? Who is the most likely member to betray the clan? Probably him. Look at him. With the beady eyes. The life you make is equal to the lives you take. Black Beetle. Ninja. The Ninja Handbook is available in paperback at deadly bookstores everywhere. Visit askaninjabook.com for more information.